morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning on this Reformation Sunday. I invite you to stand as you are able for words of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. But for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A gathering hymn is number 504.
communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you again. steadfast in your word, protect and comfort them in times of trial, defend them against all enemies of the gospel, and bestow on the church your saving peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I so will put my law within them, and I will break down on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No, no longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. Well, I will forgive them their iniquity and remember their sins no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks, thanks God. God. Psalm today will be set will be set responsible. You can find the psalm in the in your hymnal. Forty six. Psalm forty six. For God is our refuge and strength. Very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and the mountain will escape, the vast Through its waters rage and fall, and through the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams may gladden the city of God, the holy habitation of the most high. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nation is raised in his kingdom of God speaks in the earth and the of the The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, we are the Lord of the Lord. What desolation is God has brought upon the Behold the one that makes war to cease in all the world. Who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire? Be still, man, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Second reading today is from Romans 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For though the law comes the knowledge of sin, but now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law of the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by His grace as a gift for the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God put forth for as a sacrifice of atonement by His blood, effective through faith. He did, it, he did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what became of boasting, it is excluded. By what law? By what works? No, by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by law. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Son has a place there forever. So if the Son makes you free, 
you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. During my first few years of ministry, on Reformation Sunday, I would preach about the history of the Protestant Reformation. But I quickly came to realize that most folks don't really care about the history. In fact, I probably could have preached the exact same sermon two years in a row and no one would have noticed. So I decided to change my approach. I started to have some fun. One year, <clears throat> I talked about how much Martin Luther would have liked the game of baseball, the game where everyone falls short, and yet everyone always gets another chance. In another year, <clears throat> I told folks that Martin Luther would have been a Led Zeppelin fan because Luther railed against the church's teaching that we actually could buy a stairway to heaven. But my greatest achievement might have been six years ago on the 500th anniversary of the Reformation when I spent endless hours crafting a sermon that had, get this, exactly 95 sentences and exactly 1,517 words. One of my clergy friends told me that I needed to get a life. <laughs> so this year I decided to do a little of both. A little history and a little fun. And give you something that is perhaps a new way of thinking about this gift that Martin Luther has given us. The most of the rest of the church world today is just the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost or the 30th Sunday in ordinary time. But do we Lutherans, believe it or not, the Presbyterians as well, this day is special. This is the day we celebrate the beginning of the Protestant Reformation when Luther protested some of the teachings of the church by nailing his 95 theses, his 95 talking points, to the door of Wittenberg Church. So on this big day, this birthday of the Lutheran Church, this big day of celebration, what do the assigned readings talk about? Sin. <coughs> what we get on Reformation Day is not a victory parade for the Protestant Reformation, but a lot of talk about sin and law. Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. And for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. Sin, sin, sin. Obviously, the folks who decide what the readings for things like this, like Reformation Sunday, obviously these folks didn't get the memo. That what we're really celebrating here is our own awesomeness. That we are really celebrating here is that we are much more clever, we Lutherans are, than all those who came before us or after us. What's more, in an age of self-care and therapy and high self-esteem, sin is not a popular topic. As a matter of fact, in the Lutheran Church these days, there is a trend toward eliminating the confession and forgiveness at the beginning of the liturgy. There is a movement to switch to the alternative that's in the ELW, the remembrance of baptism. Why? Because confession is a down and people don't like to hear that they are sinners. You can't imagine how many people I have heard say, I don't like to be reminded that I'm a sinner. My suspicion is, is that when these folks, when these folks hear you are a sinner, what they really hear is you are a bad person. And they think, hey, if I don't cheat on my taxes or my spouse, then I don't murder or steal then I don't want to spend my Sunday mornings having someone in a white robe telling me that I do. But Martin Luther had a different way of talking about sin. He reminds us that sin is way bigger than simple immorality. 
Sin, according to Luther, is being curved in on oneself. Sin is missing the mark. Sin is all the ways that we put ourselves in the place of God. It can be an unwillingness to be generous. It can be the hateful things that we think but never say. It can be that feeling of superiority that we get when we are helping others. Sin is the fact that our ideals and our values are never enough to make us always do what we should, feel what we should, or think what we should. And anything that reveals these shoulds to us is what we call the law. This is what Paul means when he said, when he tells us that through the law comes the knowledge of sin. The shoulds in our lives are the things that make us see how far off the mark we really are. Now, no matter what we think the shoulds are, personal morality or family values or niceness or conservative political convictions or inclusivity or recycling or eating healthy or liberal political convictions, whatever we think they are, there is always a gap between our ideal self and our actual self. And usually, no one but us knows just how wide that gap is, just how short we fall from the glory of God. But we know, in those moments when we are alone and we are once again beating ourselves up or trying to deny it or again making promises of self-improvement, in these solitary moments, we know. In these moments, we see how the distance between our ideal self and our actual self can feel. And that feeling of not ever really hitting the mark, whatever that mark is, that is the feeling of the law convicting us. Martin Luther knew what it felt like for the law to convict him, to accuse him, to leave him with nowhere to rest. If you want to know what really sparked the Protestant Reformation, it is the fact that feeling this way, Luther read that passage that we just heard from Romans. Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift. And he believed this to be true. And because he believed that God's grace is a gift, he no longer accepted what the church had taught for so long, that we are saved by the works of the law. The medieval church had pawned off law as gospel, and Luther dared to know the difference. And then he became a preacher of grace, and that changed everything. But here's the thing. Pawning off law and gospel isn't a medieval thing, and it's not a Catholic thing. It's a human thing, and we do it all the time. The church does it, we do it, society does it. It's like a disease. So in celebration of Reformation Sunday, I offer you a way to spot the difference between law and gospel. You can tell the law because it is almost always an if-then proposition. If you follow all the rules in the Bible, then God will love you and you will be saved. If you lose 20 pounds, then you will be worthy to be loved. If you live a perfectly green eco lifestyle, then you will be worthy of taking up space on this planet. If you never have a racist or sexist or homophobic thought, then you will be worthy of calling out other people on their racism, sexism, and homophobia. The law is always conditional and it is never anything that anyone can do perfectly. When we treat law as gospel, there can never be life and happiness and worthiness. Under the law, there are only two options, pride and despair. When fulfilling the shoulds is the only thing that determines our worthiness, we are either prideful about our ability to follow the rules compared to others, or we despair at our inability to do perfectly anything. Either way, it's still bondage. And that's why the gospel is different. The gospel is not an if-then proposition. It's more Wizard of Oz than that. The gospel is a because, 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 because proposition. Because God is our creator, and because we rebel against the idea of being created beings and insist on trying to be God. And because God will not play by our rules, 
And because God had had quite enough of that, so God became human in the form of Jesus Christ to show us who God really is. And because when God came to God's own people, we received him not. And because God would not be deterred, God went so far as to hang from the cross, we built, and did not lift even one finger to condemn, but said, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And because Jesus Christ defeated even death in the grave and rose on the third day, and because we all sin and fall short of it, and are forever turned in on ourselves, and forget that we belong to God, and because God loves God's creation, God refuses to let our sin and brokenness and inability to always do the right thing be the last word. Therefore, therefore, you are saved by grace as a gift and not by the works of the law. And this truth will set you free like no self-help plan or healthy living or therapist or social justice work should can ever do. This is why I will never get rid of the confession and forgiveness in the liturgy. Because it's the law that puts us in a position to hear the gospel. It is the moment when truth is spoken without apology and without hesitation, perhaps for the only time all week, and it will crush us and then put us back together. It reforms us. It is reformation. Happy Reformation Sunday. Our hymn of the day is number 661.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess the faith we share using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died on his birthday. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all we need. Holy God, you give the law that your people live by and flourish. Write your law in the hearts of all who hear your name and teach us to love your commandments, that we live as you intend. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy God, you plant the earth and water it and bring forth a fruitful harvest. Send favorable weather, just wages, and the bounty of your abundance to all who are engaged in the labor of harvest. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy God, you watch over the ways of the righteous and judge your people with fairness. God judges, courts, elected officials, and all those tasked with upholding the law, inspiring them with your wisdom and zeal for justice. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy God, you hold your people in love and surround them with your mercy. Draw near to all who are in need, especially the family and friends of Bill Mockridge. Be their rest and comfort. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy God, you call us to love one another as we love ourselves. Give us the will and patience to love those who are difficult to love. Bless all the ministries of this congregation through which we show love for our neighbors. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy God, you have broken the chains of death and daily make all things new. We give you thanks for the witness of reformers like Martin Luther and all the saints. We pray that your transformative spirit is at work in us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. And, Lord. and now may the peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share God's peace with your neighbors as you feel comfortable.
I invite you to stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the announcements. Welcome. It's a pleasure to be worshiping in God's house with you this morning. And thank you, Pastor Michael and Michael, our organist, for leading us in such joyful worship. And for all of you and for participating here. Um, I'd also like to extend um, a thank you to those, all those who have been helping to clean up and repair the basement after all the water has soaked everything, <laughs> but it's all dried out and um, we have a lot of workers uh, repairing things, so it's, it's looking good. And thank you to those who've been working in the parsonage um, to get that ship shape. <coughs> and I'm going to uh, extend a thank you in advance to those who are helping us uh, today with our first congregation and community lunch at noon. I hope you'll all join us. It'll be a little hour delay while we prepare things. But everybody is welcome. Um, <clears throat> on Wednesday, uh, Bill Mockridge's visitation and um, funeral service will be at Eli starting at 4 o'clock on um, service at 5.30. And I think uh, we'll go till seven. Um, a week from today is All Saints Sunday. Uh, we're, you're welcome to bring a picture of loved ones that have passed, and um, we'll be lighting a candle for them. But if you don't have a picture, or if you don't want to bring a picture, you can light a candle. And. Um, going forward, we're getting our devotional book ready for Advent. <coughs> we have some scripture that speaks to you. And, um, please write it down um, and a reflection and a prayer and email it to myself or Victoria Stewart. Thank you. Yep. I invite you to receive the blessing of God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Ascending hymn is number 836.
peace. Christ is with you. Thank you, God.